quarantined with the Falcons. Big thanks to Medical Mutual for sponsoring our talks. And hockey coach Ty Agner is with us now. And, of course, their season was interrupted. And I'm sure that frustration lingered for quite a while. Coach, talk about trying to put that behind you and, and move up to what you have to do with your program now, which is trying to make the best of what's going on now to be better in the future. That had to be a bit of a process for you guys. Yeah, first of all, Todd, thanks for having me on and, and uh, good to talk to you again. Um, you know, in regards to our our ending and and um, how we handled that, you know, it was one of those deals where it doesn't matter where you were at in your in your season, was it, whether you were going into your playoffs or in the middle of your playoffs or your season was over or you were just starting a spring season. Um, everybody, this was uncharted territory for everybody, and, and this was – a unique, unique scenario uh, for a bunch of people. And, you know, we we were obviously really frustrated based on how we were playing at the time. We had just come off a, a sweep of, of Alaska and we'd, we'd been undefeated in 10 straight and, and felt great about where we were at, had the longest um, uh, undefeated streak in, or, or, or uh, non-losing or non-loss streak in, in college hockey. And, and we felt really good about our team. And when the news came down, it was certainly disappointing and, and emotional to tell the players that our season was over. Um, but the one thing we tried to stress is that this was bigger than than Falcon hockey. This was bigger than than um, a playoff series up at Bemidji. Uh, this was bigger than potentially winning a WCHA playoff championship. Uh, and, and we didn't have the right to be any more frustrated than anybody else. Um, you know, there's, there's athletes that had worked three and three quarter years to be ready for their spring season and had it taken away. And there's, there's teams that had, were, were, were going to be in the NCAA hockey tournament and had had great years that, that didn't have that opportunity, you know? Um, so, and, and we, we tried to, to look at it as, as big picture of an approach as possible for us and, and just let our guys know that, that we're, we're all frustrated and we're really proud of them. And, and we felt great about how we ended our season um, and how we were playing at the end of the season. But if this is the worst thing that, that you go through in your life, not getting a chance to play a playoff series, then you're going to be a really lucky individual. Well, you mentioned your team's strong close to the season and had been a season kind of like a donut and uh, you had that part in the middle that was kind of empty uh, the beginning was great uh, the ending was very strong even though it got cut off but uh, the middle was sort of lacking but as you look the next season now as you start to plan for the next go round, you've got the majority of this team coming back don't you yeah you know you're, you're right Todd we that, that's kind of the way uh, now we've had a chance to reflect on our year and and, um, you know, we, we have a lot of things that we're, we're really proud of. Um, we led the country in, in power play goals. And, and we had, like we said, we were 8-0-2 in our last 10, which was the longest streak in college hockey right now. We were uh, 21 wins, which is the, the seventh straight time where we've been over 20 wins. It was the 10th the straight year that we won a playoff series. And, and so we were, we were really proud of some of those accomplishments and, and really proud of the four seniors. Um, and, and what they, they brought to our program, they're all four going to get degrees. And, and then, like you say, looking forward, uh, we really feel good about the group we've got coming back. Um, obviously, when you lose a, a, an Alec Rauhauser, a, a two-time All-American, and the WCHA Defensive Player of the Year, and a player who just signed an NHL contract with the Florida Panthers, really nearly impossible to replace Alec, player for player. And then you add Fred Letourneau and, and Casey Lincoln held and Jake Dalton into that mix. So we're, we're, we've got some holes for sure, but we really feel good about the group. This is the biggest senior class we've had, uh, I believe, since I've been here. It's going to be a class of 10, 10 seniors. So that's a, a bunch of kids. And we've got we've got them sprinkled in and amongst our forwards and amongst our D and amongst our goaltenders. Uh, so it's a really big group. And they're a group that that's had an impact in our program since the day they got here as freshmen. And, and they have, you know, we've talked about around here for a long time that you're going to go as far as your seniors take you. And, and this senior group has, has done uh, a, a great job since they've been here, both academically and, and on the ice. And, and they, they all feel really, really uh, confident about coming back for their senior years. They all feel like there's, there's a little bit of unfinished business. And that's probably a term that, 
uh, is being overused right now by a bunch of hockey teams and a bunch of basketball teams and a bunch of, you know, uh, teams in college sports. There's there's unfinished business. But these guys re really do. Um, they've they've done great things for us over the course of their time. And and uh, hopefully uh, the 2021 20, season uh, is something that we get a chance to to participate in and, and this, this virus can get behind us and we can move forward. And, and uh, if that's the case, we really feel good about this group and, and we're excited that this could be a pretty special team. You know, we talked with Jake Roy a little bit uh, for one of these sessions about the, the training aspect of this while your guys can't be on campus, can't be together. And the skills training for hockey players, I got to imagine is really, really tough right now because where do you skate? How do you skate? That, that's something that I'm sure you guys are kicking around on how to overcome that. that. That's a huge issue, isn't it? Yeah, you know, we're definitely unique, Todd, in that, that you know, we just, you just can't, you know, grab your skates and go for a skate. Um, but the reality is that at this time of the year, once our season is over, um, for the most part, our guys put their skates away for, for an extended period of time and, and just give their bodies a chance to rest and then focus on the strength training and, and, and some, you know, agility type things and some plyometrics and some things that, that Jake and the staff at, at SIBO put together for them. So we weren't, we're not really missing any on ice stuff right now, uh, based on what the normal is for us at, at this time of the year. Uh, but the focus on training, you know, just like every other sport, you know, some kids have access to, to a lot of equipment at home and, and are able to do pretty much everything they're doing or they would be doing here. And other kids have very little. And, um, you know, some of it's weather based. You know, we've got kids that have gone home to, to different places that have, you know, a bunch of snow on the ground still and they're not outside mowing their lawn and going for jogs. And then we've got kids that, you know, we've got one as far north as Lloyd Minster, Saskatchewan, which is way up there. And then one one guy went back to Florida. So we've got kind of everybody spread out in between. And so they're trying to do the best they can. And you mentioned Jake and Jake's doing a really good job with our guys of trying to individualize programs for everybody based on what they need as an individual to improve their, their strength and, and conditioning, and then what they have access to where they're being, uh, where they're uh, staying right now. Well, coach, as you uh, hopefully look ahead to playing a full hockey season, um, as, as much as you can recall off the top of your head, what are some of the highlights of the, the schedule coming up this year? I know last year had some, some real highlights and, and some interesting and unique things for BGSU hockey, what kind of things do we have to look forward to scheduling wise this year? Yeah, we, we start with, with three non-conference series where, you know, we, we play, uh, we're going to go to St. Lawrence university in, uh, in Canton, New York, which is a team we haven't played in a while. And then we've got home and home series with some familiar uh, Mac foes in, in uh, Western Michigan and Miami. Uh, and then we've got a, a, an outdoor game next year uh, against uh, we are going to play, uh, RIT here on Friday, New Year's Eve, which will be a lot of fun. And then we're going to have an off day on that Saturday. So give give each team a chance to practice outside uh, at uh, Fifth Third Field, Field Field there in Toledo. And then we're going to have a an outdoor game against RIT on that Sunday. So the outdoor game should be a lot of fun. Uh, we make the one trip back to Alaska this year, and and the WCHA um, schedule should be a, a a very very difficult one. Should be a a tough tough schedule in, in terms of the, the WCHA. Uh, so we're, we're looking forward to, we think we've got a nice mix of uh, some really good home series, um, some really good opponents coming in. Uh, the outdoor game is always something that's a lot of fun for everybody and, and those kinds of things. So we're, we're excited about, about next year's schedule and, and about what we think can happen. Coach, we appreciate you taking time with us. Hopefully your guys can be on a regular schedule come this uh, late summer, early fall and, we have BGSU hockey to look forward to. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you, Todd. Stay safe and look forward to uh, hopefully see you, seeing you live at Frickers at some point. Absolutely. Thanks, Coach.